And we are recording. Hello, Fiona. Hi. <laughs> I'm very good. How are you? How are you doing? How's lockdown treating you? I'm good. I am certainly locked down, working from home, uh, all that usual fun stuff. Haven't really left. Well, I've left the house more now and life's getting a bit more normal, but still living at home, there's other people to think about. <laughs> so I can't, you know, go uh, out to okay. the how are you finding the whole like work from home uh, experience? Are you, are you getting on a bit well? Or? It's a bit strange because I could work from home before anyway. So like we had the option if we, you know, every Friday if you wanted to work from home, that was fine. So it's not like I'm not used to working from home. It's just the prolonged period of time. Like it's quite intense and because again, I live with my family. So like everyone's working from home. So we like fight for the best desk space and yeah it's it's different and sometimes it's hard to motivate yourself to get out of bed i'm sure everyone <laughs> is yeah. feeling like um and it's a change but like yeah i'm also kind of grateful because it's it's allowed me to do different things and i usually commute to work and get the bus which takes an hour each way so i've gained back like two hours of every day which is amazing not that i do much with that time <laughs> but, you, know, you just feel a bit more in control of your own time which is quite nice and i think it will like change the way we work forever so i'm yeah. intrigued to see how that goes it just offers flexibility to people that didn't have it before and yeah so yeah, yeah i completely agree i completely agree i mean i saw a national survey went out about uh workers that are working from home and a very large percentage said that again they probably won't go back to the office or if they do they'll go back to the office only a few days a week Exactly. Uh, interesting I think, I think a lot of people have learned a lot about themselves in this whole sort of working from home process you know a hundred percent yeah uh yeah you really live with yourself in a different <laughs> way um which you know isn't a terrible thing no. um, it just, it's a learning curve i think for everyone exactly well today we're going to talk about something very exciting and very um uh adventurous we're going to talk about disney Woo! Disney. 50% of my personality is Disney. <laughs> um, obviously, you've had an amazing experience, which we will get into. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, so first of all, do you want to give us a little kind of introduction to... Um, don't talk so much yet about how you, how you got it or what happened, but a little introduction to what this amazing experience was. So just on like the programme. <laughs> yeah um so basically um i spent a summer working at disney world uh, in florida um for about three months um and essentially disney offer these different programs for different um kind of people in over the life scale so for students they do like these cultural exchange programs if you're from all over the world so like australia england can't think of any other countries right now but <laughs> um, <laughs> like you can <laughs> essentially if you're a student enrolled at a university you can spend uh your summer period uh move over there working over there and basically living over there and yeah having that whole experience and and um, they provide other programs for if you're not a university so they have a year-long program if again you're from the uk and you want to go out there and work and um, they do a cultural representative program um where again you go out there you live and you work and they have a special um kind of i say a special park they have a park called epcot um, which has 11 different World Showcase pavilions on. So they essentially have like a mini version of the UK. So say if you are from the UK and you want to go on that programme, uh, you go out there to work and you work as a cultural representative. So you work in that UK pavilion, uh, repping the country, talking to people about your culture and your experiences living in the UK and obviously also repping Disney <laughs> and working <laughs> <laughs> work at Disney World so um that's not the program I did I just did the summer exchange one um and yeah it was a hell of an experience <laughs> <laughs> what well, I mean that, that, that's the tagline that's amazing though I mean rep, being able to to rep the UK um that, I mean that's that that'd be pretty cool I mean you know that's a lot of responsibility yeah uh yeah the, and I mean even obviously I was only out there for three months and technically I wasn't on that pavilion but even then you know people 
they speak to you and they expect you to have an American accent. So then when you start talking and they, they kind of give you a little like, and they pause a minute, sometimes they'll ask you like straight away, like, what are you doing here? Like, blah, 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 blah. and you're just there like, oh, well, you know, I'm on this program and I come out summer to work and like, I'm actually at university right now, but blah, blah, blah. And sometimes they just don't ask, but they just like stare at you the whole time. Like you don't belong here. What are you doing? And you're just like, I'm just living my best life. <laughs> <laughs> That leads, me, that leads me really nicely onto a question I was actually going to ask later, but I'll ask it now. How did you find the the attitudes uh, of, of the Americans towards you, obviously being a Brit? Because sometimes, uh, I mean, I've never, I've not been to America. I've been to Mexico, a place like that, but I've never been to, you know, America. Uh, I hear from people that have been. Sometimes they they are overjoyed and they're really really happy to see a Brit, and then sometimes it's the complete opposite way. So, like, how was it for you? most I, well i say all of my experiences were probably positive like i never had anyone confront me um you know specifically i i always had people just so intrigued as to how why and what i was doing out there um and that can really that was really nice because it would spark a whole new level of conversation like you know if you are an american working out in america it's expected but if you're a Brit working out there especially in a place like Disney World it's very unexpected so I think for a lot of guests that was so interesting to be able to t tell them about my experiences and my background and what I was doing and then that would yeah spark a whole different conversation so sometimes I'd be speaking to people for an hour just about you know our different experiences of the world and you know at the same time you're reunited under this love of the company <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that whole idea and the parks and everything so you just it would start with their interest about you but it would lead to so many different conversations at other levels and you know i met people obviously you're in america but other people travel there on holiday so i met people who um literally like lived down the road <laughs> from me and it was pure coincidence i think i was just working a shift once and again they came up to pay and they hear the accent and they're like oh but like what are you doing here where are you from and i was like oh you know i'm from bristol and they're like oh we're from bristol and i was like oh whereabouts in bristol and they were like oh here and i was like oh like wow that's, that's where i live <laughs> <laughs> so you know you, you form these connections with people just you know within the space of half an hour and um i mean i read my diary before this so i could like refresh my memory because it was three years ago i did the program um and i'd written in there about some of those experiences of speaking to people and them asking me you know questions about the uk and most of the time it was just about my accent like oh can you say harry potter and I'd be like, <laughs> harry potter and i'd be like oh my god <laughs> oh my god yeah yeah, yeah 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 um so yeah it was a very interesting cultural thing and it's called the cultural exchange program so what would you expect really and i think because it's disney world people don't expect that kind of level of culture and, and stuff com to come from it and obviously it is it's still a very base level it's not you know massively rich but you are still getting those those conversations and experiences so yeah are you, are you going to uh, ever publish your diary uh, a, Brist a Bristolian in, in Florida? Uh, unfortunately, I don't think it's very well written. Like, I was oh. reading it, but I can't spell shit. <laughs> 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 Some of the language I use is just so basic. And, but no, it's so, it is funny because at the start when I'm reading it, like, everything is amazing. It's, I'm living the dream. I'm in this bubble of magic. And then gradually, like, it kind of gets, I can tell I'm tired and I'm still loving life. But yeah, I'm definitely, like, feeling the toll of the long shifts and yeah. all that fun stuff. The, the real life stuff is, you know, the honeymoon period fades away. <laughs> well, so close. Samuel Peeps, watch your back. Here comes, uh, here comes Fiona. Here comes Fiona. <laughs> um, okay, then let's get into it then. So uh, I think the good place to start is obviously the beginning. How how did it happen? You know, um, on also on that note, when did you know that you wanted to go and work in Disney? So <clears throat> my Disney backstory is quite long, so I won't go into like all the details. But 
I mean, it it could even start like the first time I went to a Disney park, which was when I was six and it was Disney World. I had cousins and family who lived out in Florida at the time. So we just went to stay with them for a bit. And, you know, you're six. So like the, the memories are all kind of blurry. But I remember we only went to the parks for like two days. But I was transfixed on just the whole you know experience as a kid and uh, vivid like memories of the parade and it just being this like completely magical and fan fantastical experience and coming home and like that was my obsession <laughs> I was like that weird kid at school who like was obsessed with Disney and Disney World and I, I loved the the films and everything I've always loved the films growing up but I think it's it's been the parks that have really kind of got my attention um the worlds that they create there and kind of I you know I would occasionally I say every few years I would go back to a different Disney park Paris uh, California and I was extremely fortunate to be able to do that because I know it's a very privileged thing to be able to do um so yeah I kind of had that background and that attachment growing up and then I think I was like 16 and someone who I kind of vaguely knew through um, theatre, something that I'd done growing up, who was a few years older than me, um, so he'd already gone to uni and all that stuff, and it popped up on Facebook, and he was basically at Disney World working, and like 16 year old me was like, what is this? <laughs> How can I do it? Like, get me out there, like what? I didn't even know at that point that it was a thing you could do, um, I had no idea. And so I became obsessed with researching um, and through that research, I discovered this program that you could go out there and do if you were a student at university. And obviously at that point you're 16, you're just finishing GCSEs. So I still didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. I think I had always, you know, had the idea like, oh, I'll go to sit for more, do my levels, I'll go to uni and I'll get my degree, like don't know what in, but that's just the kind of, it's the path you're told to take, especially when we were at school. I think things are a bit different now and, you know, people are more open to the idea of gap years and all that stuff um, and apprenticeships. But when we were there, and especially in my school, it was very much like, you're going to go to uni and you're going to then graduate and that kind of thing. So I was like, that gave me a motivation. <laughs> it sounds so stupid. That gave me a motivation to go to uni. And, you know, it wasn't the be all and end all of me going to uni. Um, but it was certainly a, a, a core reason <laughs> that I wanted to go. Um, so then, yeah, I had this awareness of the programme. Um, and once I knew it was something that I could possibly achieve, I wanted to, you know, work towards being able to do that. And the main thing was going to uni. I'd luckily had kind of some hospitality experience anyway. Um, Growing up, I'd worked as, you know, a receptionist in a cafe at weddings, like picking up bits and bobs of experience here and there. And then, I can't remember your original question now. I feel like I'm just rambling on. So I might have already answered it, but um, yeah, then basically the kind of application process is a whole year long yep. process. You apply the summer before you go out or if you are so successful that you go out. So I applied in the summer of 2016. Um, and again, the whole application process, it starts in about June. And then I got my offer for the programme in December, I believe. So it's a six month um, process with an application, a pre-screen interview, uh, which is like a group interview, uh, which for me was horrible. <laughs> I hated it and I thought I'd done very badly. Um, I, I, I am quite a, you know, bubbly, talkative person, but in a group setting, I can often just retreat and let other people take control of the situation. Again, it depends on the group. Um, but in that group situation, as you can imagine, stick a group of 10 people who are obsessed with this company and have the same goal as you which is to go out there and work for a summer they are not going to shut up until they they get that opportunity so people like talking over each other and i was just very much overwhelmed and manic it sounds yeah like, like, like you know i 
I got it. Lions or something, all like you know. I don't know. It just sounds. It just sounds. It just sounds almost like savagery. I think I'm making it sound worse than it was, but like that's how I came away feeling. I was very much like, okay, this might not happen now because I didn't. I did get a word in because they they ask everyone, you know, every question, but it's whether you had the first say or the most important say, like because you have to make your that impression has to be instant. You have to you know, um, click with the recruiters. And at that point, it's the pre-screen, so it's not actually with Disney. So there's this company called Yummy Jobs, and they basically help with the recruitment for the program. And so they they do the application, um, the written application, they do this pre-screen, and then after this pre-screen, that's when you are then interviewed by Disney. So it's almost a three-step process. Um, so I, I did manage to get through the pre-screen, um, which, I think that was the most surprising bit for me. That was the bit where I didn't think I was going to get it, and I did, um, which was amazing. And then you go to the um, offices in Hammersmith, um, Disney HQ, um, for a one-on-one -on -one interview there with um, a, a cast member. Uh, all Disney employees are called cast members. Um, and, um, yeah, and the... The, got the applic uh, not application acceptance and the rest is history and here we are <laughs> your yeah. question it's really funny it's really funny you know you, you picked up upon on education there just really briefly me saying about kind of the route i i remember in my sixth form it was very much it, it wasn't like forced upon you but it was kind of hinted that you know you should try and aim to get into a russell group uni and then you'll go to uni and then you'll get a grad job and then you'll get paid very badly for a few years and then you might get paid all right after a few years you might switch to another grad job and then you die um, and, you know yeah it's a it, i think that, you know people are especially at my school because my mum works where i went to school uh, not as a teacher but I think now, um, and especially when my brother left, who's four years younger than me, like people are so much more open to the thought of apprenticeships and gap years. And I think about half his year took a gap year. Whereas when it was um, my year group, I think probably about 10, 20 people took a gap year. Like, and that wasn't a lot of the year at all. So it is very interesting how, especially our generation, we're kind of fed into that. that yeah system and i think now i'd like reflecting back obviously I, I wouldn't take a gap year because um i think even if i was back like this age back then i still would have just wanted to go to uni because that's the kind of person i was i was determined to follow that path but now i'm like oh a gap year would have probably been really good for me like mm. to go and do different things and explore um, different options and that kind of thing again the path i chose was fine <laughs> yeah 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 no i feel the same though i feel the same i don't feel so much as though i wish i took a gap year before uni but before yeah. i did my masters rather than go straight into the masters i kind of half wish i kind of just took some time out and didn't rush into it and when i look back now i'm sorry i know we're going really off topic now I know. that's my fault sorry oh, no 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 it's, it's you know it's good it's good uh, when i look back now i kind of think that I kind of rushed into the masters for a lot of the wrong reasons, really. I just didn't want to leave uni, really. If I'm being honest with myself, you know, it's um, so funny. And I, you know, I wish I'd just uh, explore more other options and stuff. And anyway, sorry, I'm taking it completely off topic now. We're back on to Disney. So the process then, uh, would you say the process was was very difficult to to get onto the uh, placement? I think I was my um, kind of year of intake was. I was very, very lucky in that for some reason, no one really knows why, um, that year had a weird drop in applications. Um, so I know they, they like reopened the initial application phase for a period of time because they needed, I don't know if they needed more people or, or what, um, but like kind of in a general sense, it is an extremely competitive program. Um, I think on average each year they send out between 200 and 300 people and I know some year they get as many as like 30,000 applicants like I might be spewing numbers you know from the back of my brain a bit random but it's you know it's that kind of level of competitiveness and 
you know everyone can go and research the exact numbers after this but it's an intense in, intense process and I think as well because so many people go into it holding on to this dream and really 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 want to do it and you're essentially fighting off that many people that are going to be saying more or less the exact same thing as you because everyone you know give or take a few everyone's probably had the similar experience of growing up going to parks uh you know finding this fascination and this nostalgia and holding on to that and create like having memories created for them and they want to go to the parks to create these memories for the next generation and you know give those experiences off to other people so that's the kind of like general spiel that everyone's going in with so you somehow have to differentiate yourself from that and I think that's why it's particularly hard because you're just fighting off 30,000 people that are exactly not exactly like you that's a really bad generalization but the core driving point is probably the same as yours and um, so you somehow have to make yourself a bit unique in that sense um so yeah in in my particular program i think i was lucky in that for some reason they had less applicants it was still obviously you still had to go through the interview process and some people still were um rejected throughout that um but yeah it's it's an intense process because it's over such a long period of time as well. I think you don't you don't put your life on hold for it because you're still going to university and everything. But like it's something you can just you think about it for those whole six months until you know what exactly is happening until you get that final yes. So it's quite an emotionally draining experience as well. Um, but essentially they say once you get through the pre-screen interview phase so once you've done that group interview and the yummy jobs um approve you to go to the disney interview unless you for some reason massively mess up that interview uh you're, you're pretty much there there's no reason why they wouldn't accept you because i think at that that point they've pretty much knocked out all the numbers and you know it's they've accepted to that point as many people as they can accept onto the program it's just deciding if you for any reason are not capable yeah. <laughs> of actually doing that and the majority of the time you are um so yeah it's certainly a challenging um thing to go through and especially when you know you're so hopeful and you know that that if you go out there that summer might potentially change your life like in the friendships you make the memories you make but also having the disney name on your cv like yeah. is also a massive you know asset to have moving forward out of graduation like again depending on the industry you want to go into but just being able to talk about that like further on in life and i know i've certainly used it <laughs> in interviews for my advantage yeah. um just because people especially at a young age like when you say you are just graduating people don't expect that like to, for you to have worked for um the walt disney company like they don't expect that from you so it's always a good talking point um even if it's not even relevant to the job you're going for like i know so many of my friends like one of them works in pharmaceuticals one of them <laughs> um works in copywriting the other like marketing and every single one of them has been asked and you know the process is worth it basically yeah 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 i mean and also i mean that must be incredibly rewarding to know that you have beaten off so many people you know yeah. um if you don't mind me asking and you don't have to answer this because i will ha very happily just edit it out how did you differentiate yourself then you talk a lot about having to differentiate yourself what angle did what angle did you play in uh, in your kind of process that's such a good question because I literally can't even remember. I'm going to try and <laughs> pull straight from like the very back of my brain. I think, I think in that sense, it's really good to focus on a specific experience. So anyone can talk about, I say anyone, actually, yeah, anyone can talk about the magic and the feelings you get, like watching a Disney film or going to a park, if that's what, you like like obviously some people don't like it and that's absolutely fine each to their own they might be wrong but you know we'll <laughs> <just talk. laughs> um, I think 
it's, it's like any job application. You can say anything. You can say, I have experience doing this. I, I can do this. I can do this. In this case, you can say, oh, I, I feel this. I, you know, I am inspired. But unless you provide evidence and specific examples of that, like you're not, that's how you're not differentiating yourself. You need to provide an example. And I think I must have, I should have read my application before I, I came on and did this. Like I must have focused on a specific experience. I think one of like the key things that sticks out in my memory is that first time when I went to a park um, when I was six, I was like chosen for, to go up in a parade. Like they did a parade and they brought kids out and you walked in the parade and like that was a defining moment where I was like, wow, you know, that cast member chose me. Like, I I'm seen I'm special and and that kind of thing and you know I must have drawn on the fact that I can I can pass that feeling on to other people and yeah. my experience can translate into theirs and you know bring that happiness and I know that's it I focused on um the because I studied geography at uni um so the tourism industry and um culture and everything is something I find really interesting so I remember in my application um, and interview I focused on that side of it as well because especially because it's called the cultural exchange program they don't just want you to um, talk about Disney like I think you need to understand why you're going out there in the first place as well and it is to share your culture with the world and everyone who comes to those parks um, so yeah and I, I think I must have spoken about like my background um, in studying tourism and culture and how you know <clears throat> moving out there would give me those experiences firsthand um so yeah I think I think that's probably how I have differentiated myself yeah. again it sounds very generic but what an angle though I was literally about to say what an angle because if I was to put myself in your position I'd never I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever think of a, you know if I'm trying to play an angle like that that's a really good angle to play on and why not you know you work hard for your degree yeah. yeah why not use it you know <laughs> definitely chose it so like some, um chose it for something yeah. didn't know what it was when i chose it but it came useful <laughs> exactly i mean the, the lord works in mysterious ways as they say um not that i'm a believer but uh so what did what so what did your uh what did your experience consist of then so you, you've got through the process uh you're, you've now been flown out to florida um before we try to talk about how florida was and the culture and stuff that you know actually work at disney what what did your experience consist of that is a big question <laughs> <laughs> an hour later no i'm joking <laughs> um, uh, it was a roller coaster like a complete roller coaster so essentially um I'll focus on like the actual work side of it for now because there's all of the different aspects I could focus on but um obviously you go out there to work it's not a holiday um I you start by training and you, you do about two weeks training um and the first thing you like officially do is a thing called traditions um so there's a Disney university that is a thing um, so you go along to Disney Uni and you go in your business attire like you know formal formal business wear and um, everyone there is exactly like you they're just starting on their program um, and it's essentially like a four-hour induction into the cult <laughs> <laughs> what a way to describe it no, I don't like. I think that's something I wrote in my diary. I was like, I feel like I've been induced to, like into a cult, um, <laughs> but a good cult. Um, and yeah, you're essentially taught the fundamental, like I think, morals and um, that's probably that's the wrong word for it, but um, why you're there and like expectations. There. Pardon? Like like expectations, kind of. Yeah, like what you're there to do and um and the kind so basically that they the whole kind of working in disney world is like built off of what they call the four keys so that's safety which is the top one because it's important obviously um courtesy 
efficiency in show. I think I might have got those two the wrong way around. And um, so you're kind of introduced to these four ways of working and how that basically guides the rest of your three months out there. Um, and you go, what's special about traditions is, you know, it's not so much like a, I've made it sound like very culty. It, it's not, it's just like a, a fun room and you're in there with lots of other people. You're having this introduction in, in working with the company. Um, you're, you know, Mickey comes in and you get given your name tag and he gives you your name tag. Like it's a bit of fun. You, uh, cause it's, um, Disney university is situated near magic kingdom, which is like the main park with the castle that everyone knows. Um, so as part of this experience, you, you get given like a little, uh, <laughs> headpiece and you, you literally look like a spy and you go uh, into the tunnels which is like the underground uh, network the utilities um, and you get like a little tour through there and then you go up into the park um, which is you know during the daytime there's guests everywhere um, guests and visitors again another terminology which is specific to uh, Disney and you get like you get to walk through you're in your business gear this is the first time you've entered the park as a cast member um and you've got your little earpiece in and like someone's talking to you as you're walking around and i think that's like the first time it really like hits you what you're going to be doing like this is where i'm going to work and this you know crazy busy hot magical messy like there's so many words that could be used to describe it but like that emotion kind of hits you and then you're officially like a cast member and then you start your actual training like wherever your location is so i worked in hollywood studios which is again one of the parks um and i worked in a district in there called the theater district which was very appropriately named for me because again i love theater um but that you know covered I think in total I had about 10 different locations I could work in there. So from like Frozen um, to Star Wars, to Muppets, to Indiana Jones, to some random like carts in the center of the park. Um, so you're trained in anything you could possibly have to do there. Um, you also obviously get training in how to deal with emergency situations and kind of that side of it. So you are very much trained from like creating magical moments for guests checking out people at you know cash desks to what happens if there's like a terror incident like you're literally trained in like the full spectrum and you get given like a whole man manual of like words that you need to learn like code words um for like things like if someone throws up to if there's a fire to if there's a thunderstorm like you become <laughs> a new person and you know you, you develop this new language that before like wasn't even you know you don't even you're not even aware of it even when visiting the parks like as a guest you, you don't you don't know that's the thing like my favorite bit is that the whole the whole park is viewed as a a set like it's a show um again coming from a theater background like this is my alcohol i love it yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, on stage is if you're out in the park interacting with guests like people guests can see you off stage is if you're backstage offset that kind of thing you don't have a uniform you have a costume uh you are a cast member you're not a staff member like it's the little things like that that you're taught but i know it sounds so stupid but it makes you feel like you are important like you being there like is you know you're a small kind of piece in this whole puzzle but without you it wouldn't work the same way and i know that sounds so stupid <laughs> and like ridiculous but that's that's how you feel you feel you're made to feel important and you are made to feel like you can create these insane experiences for guests which will potentially go on to inspire them to do something like like i was inspired when i was young like inspire them to do something that might change their life like you just don't know what impact you're going to have so you know at the start it's very much like this is amazing <laughs> i am having the best time like yeah and then i into like my actual experiences at work um i worked in an area where like it was very busy um in terms of uh the shift patterns we got so 
I was working 50 to 60 hours week, hour weeks. Um, so like my lowest was probably 50 and my highest was 60. Wow. Long weeks. <laughs> um, you still got like one day off um, every, every week. Like that was a, a set thing. You had to have a day off, but that could be like one day off on a Monday and then you work for the rest of the week. But then for the next week pattern, your day off isn't until like the next Sunday. So you could be working for like 13 days straight, those kind of hours, it's intense. And I think that's, that's one thing that, you know, going into it, you don't generally realize. And again, everyone has completely different shift patterns. So like I knew people who were working 30 hour weeks, but then like they had so much time off and not enough money <laughs> yeah. to like spend that time off whereas I was working longer shifts and you know building up this supply of money which again was great um but like I had less time to spend in the parks but I would still make the most of every single second that you had to spend in the parks because as a cast member obviously when you're working there you get a free um pass to get in so you know before your shifts you can just pop to Magic Kingdom for breakfast and then like head over to work. Like it's an insanely different bubble of life that, you know, you look back now and I'm like, how, how did I do that? Like, how was that my life? How was I living those experiences? And at the time that was normal. Like obviously I never took it for granted at all, but, you know it was just one ball of craziness and you know it would I always enjoyed going to work because you never knew what was going to happen like from good experiences to bad like it's like any job you know in hospitality at the end of the day you are kind of working in a shop that was my role I was a merchandise car don't think I said that I was a merchandise cast member yeah. <laughs> um, so I worked in the shops um yeah and carts and things like that so um essentially it's a glorified summer shop job yeah, yeah. Um, that's <laughs> how i like to describe it to people um but you know it's so it's also so much more than that um yeah, like, but that, you, you discredit it. You should, don't discredit it you know it's still yeah. amazing that was like the base level and then everything like built up on top of that um with the extras but yeah like yeah i i could go on for ages about my specific work experiences but um, we can talk about like you know magical memories and bad moments um if you want to ask about that but like the overall work experience was probably unforgettable because you're just engrossed into this this world of you know when you are working there you are again if you are in a park you're still in a park you're like interacting with people from all over the world and you're creating these memories for them um and even if you are working say a 14 hour shift like i would be occasionally it flies by because you, there's always someone there to talk to there's always a shelf that needs stocking <laughs> like yeah, yeah. there's always something you can do and i think that's probably what sets it above say a normal shop summer job because it's in a it's in that setting that is completely different to anything else that is in the uk for example and yeah so that experience is very unique um yeah. overwhelming at times stressful at times yes but like fundamentally magical yeah. and unique <laughs> It fascinates me so much because it from from what is from what you're saying, it sounds like the park itself is like its own ecosystem. It is. It's like its own its own like entity just functioning on its yeah. own, away from yeah. anything else in the world. You know. The whole so Walt Disney World. I don't, I don't know the official word for it, but it's like it is its own city. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's officially a city. Maybe a county. Like. I should yeah, I should know this, but they <laughs> have, when this is going like way into the history, and I'm definitely going to get some things wrong. So if anyone who is like a proper Disney nerd watches this, they're going to be like, "She's wrong." But um, when it was first made, um, and like Disney bought all the land, um, I think 
they wanted to obviously do their own thing but to do their own thing they needed to break away from like the not the laws but the kind of structure of the you know the surrounding orlando like they needed to create their own system yeah yeah, uh, yeah. But to do that they basically created um a new district i, I don't know the word um yeah. it's called reedy creek um but yeah so it's its own city so like the fire department there they have their own fire department they're not you know governed by you know the normal the norms um, and that kind of thing and literally everything is a bubble like once you enter disney world you are on you know you've you've gone away from orlando and you are in disney world like it's its own thing and i sound so stupid right now <laughs> no, 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 no. It's like the it? technical language at all but oh, is um, it? yeah so that it, it literally is its own ecosystem and especially you know living there so you you live you don't live on property you um sorry if, stop me if i'm like cutting off any of your questions that you no, 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 yeah, <laughs> but you you move out there and you are placed in housing um which is like it's like when you first go to uni and you know you're just popped in to a random flat um with random people so they basically have that so they have like four accommodation blocks and that's off disney property but it's like a five minute drive away it's literally like on the back door but even then you are still technically on disney property because disney owns that property and because disney owns that property the security on those like accommodation not campuses <laughs> on the accommodation yeah. was insane so my family um this is a complete tangent i'm so sorry <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> my family came out to visit and um i think it's past like 7 p.m um you can have guests but basically you have to sign them in and out every time like you can't just let people in if you enter the uh, property you have to show your blue id which is like your you know it identifies you as a cast member i have mine here i dug mine out especially just to remind myself it's really oh. cute i'll probably i should hide like the actual information but it's just like oh that's cool that's cool that's cool um and so my family came to visit but people under the age of either 21 or 18 couldn't enter the property past 7 p.m like they are so strict on all the rules like you can't have overnight guests there if you do you basically risk being turned which is fired and deported home <laughs> if people are found to be staying overnight in your room um so like even though you're not technically in disney world at that point you are still under the disney bubble and it it is a bubble like you even though you are living in orlando you don't you you aren't living in orlando yes it's yeah, not yeah. you're not anywhere on disney property for example i'm not scared of gun crime because i know the level of security there is so high that you know that's just a gun is never going to get through that level of security but the second you step out and go to walmart even though it shouldn't be in the back of your mind it's like okay i'm in america now people can have guns in america which is you know the way they are running and that's fine but that is then a risk <laughs> and because you are so used to being in that disney bubble and that being your norm when you do step out of it it is a culture shock and it sounds really bizarre and it's it sounds so like privileged to be able to like even say that or think that um because it is a privilege to be in america and you know in that safety net <clears throat> obviously crime still does happen um on disney property like it doesn't stop other crime um but in in terms of that like it is a massive safety net um and yeah again i think i have completely gotten off tangent and no, I can't no, 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 no. <laughs> the thing the thing is like it's so interesting like any any information you provide about anything is interesting because obviously to the uh to the, the common man like you know, you know us that haven't had been you know we don't have haven't had this experience you know like i'm not even if i'm being truth be told i'm not even a huge fan of disney but and that, that's fine 
Yeah, but I, the, uh, hearing about the park and because what interests me, right? I didn't want to make this conversation deep, but what interests me is how Disney have this this whole its own ecosystem going on, like you're saying, with its own laws. And for yeah. some reason, that really interests me. It's like someone's come along and like created their own paradise, uh, like away from any sort of um, any sort of federal law or any sort of federal rules. It's like, it, you know, it's, they're, 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 they've created their own island, their own bubble with its own politics and its own sort of social system. And I don't know, I don't know why that interests me, but that really interests me. And like hearing, like, you know, hearing about what you're saying, it, it's fascinating, it's really fascinating. Yeah, I don't know, obviously, don't quote me on any of this. I don't know to what extent, like, you know, the level of laws and everything, like, I may be completely off on that, but like the base level is like they have their own fire departments and you know that kind of system. Um, but yeah, it is. It's the size like the whole of Disney World is the same size as San Francisco, so like it is a city in its own right, um, and it is a utopian city. It's not. <laughs> Again, off topic. I did my uh, dissertation um while I was out there so I, I did my research and stuff and my dissertation was on like the um motivations and experiences of people um visiting Walt Disney World which technically is like another technical world like a word a contrived contrived or contrived I can never say it um attraction so it's a it's a fake place but it's real mm. so like you know it is built as an attraction and it the places there that are built are not authentic places but people still go and have real experiences so that's what i find really fascinating is that they've literally created this whole utopian um city that is still still real because people can still visit it and have those real life experiences and you know they, they will leave it because no one can live there like their whole life like they will leave eventually but yeah i find that so fascinating too um and i mean one of the parks there which is called epcot again that's the one with like the world showcase um with the pavilions and stuff the original concept for that um from disney like walt disney himself was wasn't a theme park he wanted to create a utopian city um called epcot uh again what is, it's like experimental prototype community of tomorrow um so his original idea was to create a fully functioning utopian city in florida um at the place where epcot now stands um i think in in the walt disney um property um and yeah with you know like futuristic transportation systems like the again i'm no source for this there is so much um information out there online but like that was his original idea and even though that never came to um jewish tuition fruition you know the word i mean <laughs> that never happened but parts of that have been brought to reality in the sense that even though it's not a city that you can live in um you can still go and have those utopian experiences in a paradise where nothing is dirty you know there is no minimal crime like that whole side of it is so fascinating <laughs> um, and a whole other discussion I mean they do have a town there um, again I think it is on property um, which is called celebration and it is an actual town that you can live in uh, for ridiculous amounts of money um, obviously, but like that is the closest um, Epcot, the original concept for Epcot ever got to. So there is a town that, that you can literally live in and you can live in Disney World. And I've never visited myself, some of my friends have. I kind of wish I did when I lived out there. Um, but apparently it's literally like walking onto a film set because it just looks, <laughs> even though it's a real place and you can live there, it just looks fake because it's so perfect. and yeah i find that whole side of the company very fascinating um and it's something that people don't necessarily even realize um is a thing that they do <laughs> exactly exactly i mean that's what i was gonna say that's why 
this this kind of underlying angle is so interesting because it's again it's like you're saying it's something people don't think about you know they they, they see disney and they see the the magic that it brings through through its film through its merchandise through you know yeah i mean it feels like at this point disney owns half the world <laughs> you know but it you don't ever think about kind of um the ideology that's kind of embedded in it and it, and it is fascinating because people you know it's i feel like it should be discussed more um, it, it, it's yeah. there's so much like actual literature on it it's so interesting yeah. obviously for my dissertation i had to read all of that because you know i was trying to find the like root cause of why people go and why people are so like you know infatuated by it because people are like i you know i am one of those people <laughs> and i have no shame in that at all like um yeah so the the literature on it is completely fascinating to read because it goes into detail on on yeah why why people are attracted to places like that and want to visit these utopias um very 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 interesting but like another side of it is again this is more on my dissertation subject and not as a cast member um like people obviously that they create these themed lands there um and you know that look like things that you see in the films and so people in all kind of sides of life you you know you you visit london and you're like oh i remember this film that was you know i i've seen this park in a film before and that's people find that so cool and people will travel to places like in the real world <laughs> not that disney isn't the real world but you know um cultural places and visit places where films were filmed and find that so fascinating obviously in the disney sense a lot of those films that were created are fantasy they are cartoons they they weren't filmed in real life places and what disney does is take those imaginary places and bring them to life so when people visit it's like they are stepping into this part of their imagination that they wouldn't be able to otherwise without those parks there and that's another side of it that i find completely fascinating it's like it's media tourism but it's not because <laughs> because it's disney disney world like it's not yeah. london or scotland like you know it's it's a fake place again um coming into the fake and the real um but yeah it it solidifies their imaginary place in a real life place and i think that's why people go back so much as well because once once you've created those memories there technically that's the only place you can recreate those memories and like live that past nostalgia and you know growing up people will keep going back and keep going back and through throughout their life they will keep going back and you know people always like why <laughs> why are you going back again like you went there a few years ago go see australia go see thailand and i'm all for traveling i i love traveling other places as well um but it's like a second home mm. because you have the comfort there you know what to expect you you know the experiences you've had before and you know you can create them pretty much exactly to a T because nothing will have changed. Obviously things change there as well because they're constantly redeveloping the parks and adding things and taking them away, but the fundamental experience you have there is, is going to stay the same. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm uh, you know, obviously I'm, I'm just a guy, my, my degree is in words and it's just, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not going to claim to be, an, you know, I'm, I'm an amateur psychologist, so that's all, you know. But I imagine, I imagine a lot of it is to do with that sense of escapism yes. and nostalgic feel, because obviously for a lot of people, they grow up watching Disney. And when they hit that adult age where life starts becoming a lot more stressful, and a lot more tough, I suppose the brain automatically reverts back to a time where they were happier. And that happier time was when they were younger watching Disney. So I suppose going going to uh you know going to disney going to disney world and a lot of it is to do with it, it finding that that sense of escapism again that they could come out of their normal life yeah 100%. and that in doing my dissertation and speaking to people that's what i found it's it strips back the world from you know the noise and there's a lot of it at the moment and you know any 
person who graduates and is, you know, dives straight into the real world head first, it's overwhelming. And sometimes you literally just want to forget about all of that and, and not have to, you know, worry. And by going to Disney, I think people find that they are taken back to that childlike mentality where they don't have to think about, you know, the pressures of their real life and they are taken back to a simpler time and yeah that is that kind of nostalgia and escape escapism is rooted within that place for a lot of people and i think that again that's why they keep going back because that is where they can truly go back to that simpler time and that childhood and um yeah it's it, i find it so interesting and then again for a lot of people sorry tesco's just arrived if you can hear no, it's okay. <laughs> that's all right don't worry um but for a lot of people they they won't they won't understand that and they won't people will go and be like i don't get the hype yeah. i don't care for this and you know they don't they, they, they won't like it and that's absolutely fine you know people can go and be bored there because they're like well what is this weird ride where there's like 200 dolls just like kind of singing this annoying song at me i don't understand yeah. <laughs> but like for some people they rode that ride with their mum when they were a child and going on that ride maybe their mum's passed away now and you know going on that ride brings back that that memory and that you know will make them feel like their mum is there with them again and you know it's it's a very base kind of baseline of nostalgia and memory and that's that's what it is down to for a lot of people but then some people will, will go when they're an adult and they've never been before but still feel have those same feelings because of the places they are visiting mm. like the childhood places they are visiting while they are there like and being taken back to you know memories that they didn't even know they had and that kind of thing so yeah very very interesting it's just who we are as humans i suppose isn't it? it's just literally yeah. who we are as humans um does the Tesco delivery driver want to come on the blog? See what see what they know about Disney. I'm, I'm not I'm not interviewing the delivery driver. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'll think up some spur spur the moment questions. Um, okay, very good, very good. Let's move on then. Um, would you uh, would you do would you do it again? And I feel like that's a bit of a stupid question because I feel like I know what the answer is going to be. But would you go back and do it again? That's so hard. If I could go back and just relive the exact summer that I did I would do that in a heartbeat because you know it was it feels unreal now like I went and I had the most insane experiences I I met the bestest friends you know and people I still sp speak to every single day now and that kind of thing I know because I could have applied to do a second program um so I went in the summer between my second and third year at uni and technically you can apply um to go out like when it's your last year of uni um so after you graduate um and then that's the cutoff point um but i remember when i was um it was like my last few weeks out there and applications opened for the next year <laughs> um and i was still out there and i was like well this is weird <laughs> um and one of my friend um my friend who who i worked with um um, she she was applying and I was thinking about it and I was like I could apply for next year um, but at that point I had had such a, a special time and I think you know some people do go out there and have negative ex experiences you know they live with bad bad people that they don't get on with um, they don't like where they're working and that kind of thing and I had had such a positive experience that I was kind of worried if I did go back again I would be disappointed because everything that I'd done had been so perfect and it sounds stupid because I did I did have bad days and I did have negative experiences but on the whole I had a very uplifting and positive experience so at that point I was like I I don't want to come back as a cast member because if it doesn't live up to the like expectations and experiences I've had this time I'm then gonna that's gonna taint my view of what I've done and I don't want that to be tainted and I'm 
I'm quite glad I made that decision to be honest and I think where I am now I you know it's been two years since I've graduated which is crazy and horrible um, but I'm I'm putting a foot in the door in a different industry in um, you know a, a career path that is different to what I did out there but I'm like slowly moving my way forward in it so I think I don't think I could ever go back to do the kind of thing that I was doing that summer because I'm on a different path now. Ugh, so cringy. <laughs> um, but that doesn't mean I can't see myself working for the company again, just in a different setting. Because, you know, I, I did come away with such positive experiences of working with a company and, um, you know, Again, that's a privilege to be able to work for them in the first place. But if I could ever do that again um, in the career path that I may be thinking about now, like that would be the dream. Because, <laughs> um, yeah, so that specific program, no, don't think I'd do again, which probably isn't what you'd expect. Um, but, um, but the company as a whole, like I'd love to work for them again. And I know again most of my friends who I met through the through the program like would probably say the same as well and um, with the exception of a few um but like yeah they they know what they're doing yeah yeah they're very smart <laughs> and um sometimes in good ways and sometimes you know it it looks like in bad ways and but like the overall kind of influence they have over the whole entertainment industry as a whole, but not just entertainment, like hospitality and, you know, merchandise, like they're very smart. And to be able to work for a company of that like global scale again, um, who are leaders in their fields, like, yeah. And then because the, they're fundamentally driven by like, you know, the, the magic and, and that kind of thing. And that's something that really resonates with me still like you know I, I think I annoy half of my friends because I'm just like I am in a bit of a dream world sometimes like and and I know that that's not real like life isn't perfect but if I can spread my own pixie dust I'm gonna try. <laughs> End of the day who is anyone to tell you it's not real? Well no again without making this sound deep <laughs> No, I mean, obviously, I don't know if this, again, I'm going off topic. I don't know, again, if this become comes from a place that obviously me and you are both very creative people and obviously we, we enjoy theatre and we enjoy very creative things. You get a lot of people in life, especially some of my friends and stuff, that are kind of like, oh, you know, uh, not uh, not kind of grow up, but come, come to the real world, you know, come to the real world. You know, well, even 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 studying an English literature degree, come to the real world. What are you going to do with an English literature degree? Go and do maths, go and do engineering, you know. But my kind of viewpoint on life in general is just let people get on with it. If that, you know, like, if, if, if you want, if, you, if that wants to make you happy, if you want to be, if you want to live in a dream of something, yeah. let it do it, do it. Life's That's too the thing. Like, yeah, life is too short. And if they're not impacting anyone by having that experience and, and chasing the goal that they want, like, why, what, what right do people have to shit on that like exactly not more yeah. like you know and whether that is because you want to be a doctor or a lecturer or go and work on a cruise ship or be a stage manager like people are living their own lives and i think that's one of the things that just really annoys me about like the current you know climate is that people are so entitled to thinking that they're you know that people need to not follow the correct path but we, we keep getting onto paths here this is really <laughs> <laughs> but like you know we need to that isn't someone else's and you know people people will follow the like random path and succeed like and if the, if someone had told them why are you doing that that's not a real job like mm. what are you going to do you know you're writing a musical why would you do that that's never going to be successful if they had listened to that person we wouldn't have things like hamilton and you know frozen 2 like there's all these insane things that then those people that shit on it will consume and will love and and you, you kind of sit there like how can you say that when 
you consume the literal things that you are stop trying to stop people from doing. If we didn't have those people, we wouldn't have this huge arts and cultural scene that, you know, we have on in the world. And that's that's how people get entertainment. Like what would be people's lives if they couldn't come home, st stick on Netflix yeah. and like just relax for an hour? Like that is engraved into people's routines now, but Oh, yeah. You only really need to look as far as, uh, as as recent as literally what's going on in this current climate now with, with the lack of money. You know the Tories are giving to the art industry. But anyway, I promise I'm not I'm I'm not trying to take us off topic. I promise I'm not. Yeah. I keep, we keep... I'm sorry. I'm I'm like. No, no. I'm my fault. I'm leading the conversation. It's my fault. Uh, I, it's just we keep touching upon topics that I get really like riled up about. You know. Yeah. It's very glad to hear that a global force like Disney really does kind of value its workers is, is the point I was, I was coming to make, you know, um, because I must admit, again, as an onlooker, as someone who's not into Disney or not in, you know, not, not, not had the experience, I would almost, probably sadly, automatically presume that because it is such a multi-billion uh, dollar uh, company with, with thousands and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of workers, that it, w it would have that disjointed relationship you know you kind of just expect that so like hearing you say things about like even the terminology about being cast members and stuff, i love that i think that's brilliant because i think that psychologically does so much for the workers as well yeah it creates an inclusive culture and yeah a lot of companies don't have that these days and i mean again like this is just off all my personal experience like i'm sure some people would sit here and say they were treated badly like and you know because it is such a big company that's bound to happen because it happens in the smallest of companies. Like, you know, you can't create perfection for everyone. It's just, I was very lucky in that experience of, you know, of feeling included and feeling like I mattered and yeah. And yeah, so again, that might've just been me. Yeah, um, yeah. But, but, I mean, it's not to say I didn't have bad things. <laughs> happen like throughout the program at all um yeah but i mean three months and 60 hour weeks it, you know if you're doing the maximum is is, is a long time I, I don't care what anyone says that is a long time when you're in there living it that must feel like a lifetime it does like it it was completely draining and exhausting and i remember because i always wanted to make the most of every single second i was out there working like i didn't want to put half the effort in or anything like that and I'd, I'd leave and I'd finish my shift and I'd just so you get buses they have like this whole network of buses which are bad buses they're the worst buses I've ever experienced in my life but that's another topic um <laughs> and you just sit on the bus and you literally crumble like I I would sit there and just go completely brain dead like I had friends that were falling asleep on their buses like it's intense and you know you wouldn't do it for any other job you you literally like I mean I literally wouldn't I would not do that for where I'm currently working but I guess that's you know the, the part of it is part of that experience is that you you, you are prepared to do that because you're enjoying it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And also, I mean, once you finish your experience, you got to come to Bulgaria with us anyway. So exactly. it, I need to get back for something. <laughs> God. <laughs> um, okay then. So, what was your? I'm just going to get a really tough question. What was your favourite thing about your experience that you had there over the three months? Don't say friendship, okay? <laughs> I'm not asking what you're going to go with. Don't say friendship. I won't say friendship, but I will briefly touch on the friendships because, like. I was talking to the girls that I I made a very solid group of friends from um, from the the program and you know I, I have other friends from it as well um, but you never nowhere else would I literally flew out there and um, you you have to stay the first night in a hotel because um, your your rooms you can't move in until the next day into your accommodation and this is one girl who um, I flew out with and we'd like arranged a hotel together. It was a group of six of us and you like enter the hotel room and obviously there's three beds and you're like, okay, <laughs> like we've got to buddy up and you are literally sleeping with a stranger technically who you met 12 hours ago. 
you know, when you arrived at the airport. And then the next day you move into your flat. And I remember I, cause you can choose your roommates before you go out. I know you can like buddy up with people. Um, but I was like, no, I'm going to go random and see what happens. And, you know, um, in my mind, I was going to be put in with people from all over the world. So I was like, that'll be super cool. I'll like make friends, you know, from China and, um, all places like that. And, um, I just so happened to be put in a room with six, uh, five British girls. Um, so I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> cool. Like, you know, it's nice and close to home. There's yeah. not going to be any cultural barriers. So that's good. But the friendship, like, and the bond that you make straight away is, I think people at home must have been like, why the hell, like, what are they doing? Like, how are they this close already? That doesn't make sense. But when you're thrown into that situation together and you also have that underlying common interest, there is, you form these, like, unbreakable bonds with people because you have those shared experiences, but also then you can add layers to the friendship. So it does become you know it's like when you you move to uni and you're sharing that experience like it's a similar note to that like you, you know you are making these these friendships for life and like i can't even imagine my life without some of these people now um because they drive me you know like all my other friendships they drive me in a way that if i didn't have them there i might be on a different part like you know you just you just don't know what decision you'd make without them <laughs> um yeah. or the things that you'd miss out on without them so that's the friendship side of it um probably what was the question again <laughs> <laughs> your your favorite thing about the experience um apart from friendship obviously apart from friendships um probably probably the guest interaction and again that's a very generic answer but like I had several um, moments where they call them magical moments where you can create special moments for guests and you know that can either be like come out of a, a nice conversation you have with them um or you know just a random act of kindness <laughs> um but like I there were several ones that I had um, that I created for guests and um, for example one of them this girl she uh, oh, I'm gonna have to go into that story as a cast member as a merchandise cast member you have a pin lanyard oh I did have mine somewhere um, <laughs> and so basically Disney have these things called pins another very smart merchandising uh, tactic where you can basically just buy different pins of like characters uh, let me just show you one as an example. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're just like these little fun pins. Yeah. They're like $10 a pop. You know, some people consider that cheap. Some people consider that expensive. Um, yeah. And as a cast member, you get a lanyard and you just get given like 12 pins um, on your lanyard. And what you can do is guests can come up to you and they can trade pins with you. So, um, if they have a pin that for some reason they don't like or they've had a mystery pack and they just got this random pin they can come up and look at the pins that you have on your lanyard and you swap them so they they can pick one and you, you can swap them over and it's just it's a fun way of like speaking to people and creating different interactions and it's something for guests to do as well like it's just a fun thing i really enjoy it <laughs> I, was, I was gonna say did so I mean, if I was to be a bit of a bellend, I'd think I'd be really systematic, figure out what I want. There'd be no conversation involved. I'd go straight to the work and write that one, that one, right. Like, you'd we're, have, we're, like, in, on another, like, twist side of the negative side of it, you'd have people, like, coming up to you. They just, it would look like they're staring at your chest because they're just, like, <laughs> walking towards you like this and you'd be still there, like, okay, and then they'd just be like, I want that one. <laughs> okay, there you go. Like, have a nice day. <laughs> you'd have people like that but equally you'd have the you know the kids and the nicer people that would come yeah. and actually talk to you so i had this one girl um who came up to me and um she was like oh this is my first ever pin trade and i was like oh that's so cool like you know talk talk her through how it works um because it's it, again it's disney so that like there's loads of rules with it like there's literally a certain way you have to hand over your pin to the guest so they don't get stabbed by the back of the pin. <laughs> um, so like I was there like explaining all that to her 
and we do like some pin trades and um, then um, again there's another rule that technically you're only supposed to trade up to like two pins with one guess obviously sometimes usually like that's a bit, that's all they want but sometimes they will like want more and more and more and sometimes it's fine and sometimes you're like well no um but in this case obviously this is a young girl and she she wanted one of another one of my pins but she'd already done too many trades so i was like oh in talking to her i'd realized it was her birthday or she told me it was her birthday so i was like oh you know as, as a little birthday gift like you know if you really really like this pin yoda because at this point i was in a star wars shop Yoda like actually told me he really wants to give it to you as a as a gift so you can remember you know your your day here like on your birthday and coming into the Star Wars shop and all that spiel <laughs> that you kind of did to like, make it a magical moment for a kid um and like at this she she basically like burst into tears and was like hugging me and I was like well oh, like it's just a pin but you know like you're welcome and she'd run over to tell her dad um and her mum like had been speaking to me after this and she was like what you did was so special for her she'd actually been very ill um like i don't know when over a period of time and um so like for some reason their day had been not ruined but like completely not what she'd expected it the kid had expected it to be um and how like you know that tiny me that was quite a regular thing that i did did for people like that was a normal thing um in that moment and for me it was just a, a little thing but for her she was saying like she could tell that 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 was the thing that had made her day and that was you know that was a special moment for her so that you know it's again it touches on what I've, I've spoken about before but like it's those little moments that yeah. i know she was going to go away from that and take that forward with her for the rest of the life like her, hopefully she's probably forgotten about it now probably has <laughs> now, but i like to think of it <laughs> i'm actually thinking of her next so i'll let, I'll let you know <laughs> um yeah and it's just creating those those magic moments and i mean another one of my friends this isn't my personal experience but it's one we always talk about she she worked at one of the resorts and she um had basically uh been speaking to this family um and they'd gone on to tell her that they'd come to disney world because they were celebrating an adoption so they'd adopted like three of these kids and um, so obviously lee was like oh this is this is amazing and she went to speak to her coordinator like if they could do anything just to you know help them celebrate and turns out her coordinator or leader um was also an adopted um had been adopted when she was younger so like she turned around to lee and was like we are going to give them the world so lee had like a budget of it was either fifty dollars per person in that party which was six or a hundred dollars basically a, a big chunk of money and she just went into the shop um at this resort and took a load of merchandise and was able to gift it to this family and um, so she gave them like a plush each which is a little cuddly toy and um, some pins so they could start pin trading um and like the main thing she gave them was like a big photo frame so they could um you know take one of the photos that they'd had like technically their first family photo and pop it in that frame and like forever remember that holiday it's like the first holiday they'd has had as a family and you know that's the one we always talk about because that was a very special moment um, for her and you know that's as good as it can get like you have amazing amount of money <laughs> that mm. the company are giving you to spend on a family for free um, and it's yeah it's creating those hopefully life lifelong memories for other people and at the same time getting the enjoyment out of it yourself um, yeah, yeah. Cool. What about um, anything you didn't you disliked about the experience? And obviously, I don't. I, I've I've purposely not asked you anything negative. I don't want you to. I know you wouldn't anyway, but I don't want you to obviously slam the Disney and uh, for in your own words to be shut down really randomly or you know like that. But in your experience, in in the most pleasant way you can phrase it, what was what what did you not like about the experience? Obviously, the hours which I've touched on which again was a personal thing like some people have 30 hour weeks so you know that's a very specific um one to me um the 
I lived in um, an apartment which was one of the oldest ones. Um, you know, each of there's four, so each of them come with their like stereotypical things that happen at this apartment. And you know, it was also the cheapest, so I didn't mind. Like I was saving up some money, and it meant I could spend more on food and all that fun stuff. Um, but we had some quite like negative experiences with our accommodation. Like I think Lee's, who was my roommate, so you get a roommate, you don't get your own room another like thrown into the deep end friendship thing um but um her bed broke uh, our air conditioning broke and we also had some cockroaches for like the last month of our program which as a bit of a squeamish person was horrible like i opened the drawer one morning um, as i was getting ready to like get out my bra or something and i picked it up and there was just like a baby cockroach on it and i was there like what do I do? And yeah, it it was intense. And obviously, they they try and clear up the bug problem. But you're living in Florida, like yeah, it's something that comes with that climate, <laughs> and you can't really control it. Um, so the accommodation was a bit dodgy sometimes. The long hours and the bus system, because the buses are another level of annoying. <laughs> You'd you'd have to you'd have to get the bus to work unless you wanted to uber yeah. which would be you know like ten dollars each time which some people did and some people could do but i was like nope i'm not doing that i'm getting the bus um they were just just unreliable like it's like any like bus system like you know with the unibuses unreliable like long hot even though there was aircon like so they need to be too hot or too cold so like say you'd get drenched in a storm because it's florida and they have to storm every day and then you'd get onto the bus you'd be like soaked and then you were on air like in aircon so you'd go freezing like you go from like 30 degree heat to freezing cold and that whole like climate yeah the climate's another one as well oh, i love it and i hate it like yeah um but overall those like negative experiences that i did have and the tiredness of the program like I think I was averaging about five hours sleep a night. You just get used to it. <laughs> and again, like, they're not the things that I think about now when I reflect back on, on my programme. Like, I know at the time I was ready to come home when I um, was coming up to the end of my programme. I, I was just a bit tired. I missed my home routine, I think. Obviously, when I was doing 60 hour weeks, it does take a bit of a negative spin like just in your mind because of how much you are you are working and so yeah in the end like I was I was ready to leave I think um not that again I was like I'm ready to come back as like a guest on our holiday but as a you know 60 hour a week cast member I'm, I'm done <laughs> so yeah did you manage to do much traveling kind of outside of uh, of the job in disney and also uh, kind of leading on to that how did you adjust to the the kind of culture change of florida and america in general so with the um culture change again it's such a hard one because it's its own culture like i touched on before you're you think you're moving out to America, but you're like, you're not because you are spending a lot of your time at Disney <laughs> and that is not like the rest of America. Um, so I think I, I adjusted to that absolutely fine. Um, what was weirder adjusting to was leaving afterwards because you are so used to being in this giant bubble of happiness and safety and, you know, magic and, suddenly when you step out into the real world so i traveled to uh, miami after just for a few days i was like um i didn't uh, again probably one of my regrets i do wish i kind of like did see a bit of america after but i think like when i was booking my flights because you had to book them out in like the january beforehand i was like well what if i have no one to go with and you know all those irrational thoughts that stop you from doing things that was me <laughs> um, so I was like, I'll just leave a few days after my program before I go home. And and then I found some girls who I originally flew out with who were going to Miami. So we were like, great, um, I'll go down to Miami with you, with, uh, with you for a few days and then I'll go back to Orlando and fly home. Um, so leaving that like Disney bubble, um, I remember we 
um, we went to the bus station, the Orlando bus station, to get Megabus down to Miami. And that was such a cultural shock. And it's it sounds so um, not stupid, but it it sounds like what? Like what do you even mean? But when you've been in this this bubble um, for three months and you are stepping out into the real world, you know, um, it where your bag could get to you have to then keep an eye on things because usually you'd just be used to leaving your suitcase in the lobby and you know like you've still got eyes on it but you know no one's going to come over and take it like mm. and if they did they wouldn't exactly get very far because there are cameras and all that stuff and you're suddenly in in the real world yeah. um, where that that doesn't exist it's it's that's the culture shock and that's what i found and especially um, coming home obviously after Miami and having a great few days just relaxing on the beach um, not at night though because that was always very scary for us uh, Miami at night is interesting um, especially as a young female um, <laughs> coming home was also very strange because again coming out of the American bubble where you're used to things being a certain way like and suddenly you're back in Oh, you know rainy England it's like how did that even happen it, it feels like it was a dream and um you know obviously seeing all my friends and um Ed my boyfriend and you know going to Bulgaria with you guys like that was all insane and amazing and I had all these great things to look forward to but you also feel like a part of your soul has been left behind yeah. and you know that experience that will change your life and will be engraved in your memory forever you know you're never going to have that again and i think leaving that is very strange <laughs> and moving on from it is very hard as you can tell because i'm still talking about it three <laughs> years later <laughs> yeah yeah i, I mean i i can't I, I i feel like for a lot of people myself included it's it's very difficult for us to relate to you know to, to something like that what you've been through i know because sometimes for people that travel, and again, this is coming from a really naive perspective because I've not done as much traveling as I ever intended to, I would do, you know. But yeah. you kind of know that when you're traveling around places that it's going to come to an end and you're going to come back and, you know, you're there for kind of experience. But it's very different in kind of, I, I feel anyway, it's very different in your experience because you're out there, you're living within Disney, you're, 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 you're invited and you're welcomed into this whole new world, this whole new system and all these fantastic people. And then, you know, I kind of, I imagine it sometimes you must forget that it is going to come to an end at some point. And it's, it must, yeah. be, it must be, it must be, what I'm trying to say is, I imagine it must be a much steeper kind of drop from coming from uh, working every day, 60 hour weeks in Disney to coming home than it would be to, for many other people to travel and, and come back, if you know what I mean. Yeah, strange. it's just very different. And I think that's one of the reasons why I'm like, I don't think I could do the year long program because like after three months like you know your whole mindset is completely different and and you are in, engraved in this again bubble after a year like yeah how do you then come home and function i you know and i'm also incredibly jealous of anyone who gets to do that one of my friends um did it before the parks were closed um and you know i'm very jealous of her but I think that crash after coming home for me would just it would be hell like and that sounds so sh stupid and and privileged it, it is a privilege and but it's like anything that you have that's good in your life like you don't want it to end and it's, it's the same as leaving uni like you exactly. are leaving those experiences and those people and, and that place sometimes sometimes people stay but you're never gonna have that that experience again and you know that deep down and it's it's a real shock to the system um to move on from and you know it's i think it's why we all hold on to the uni days like because it is an insane time in your life that you know you again you don't realize how good it is until it's gone <laughs> um, exactly and you know it goes so quickly and you don't realize and yeah. You, you look back don't you and you think oh you know i wish i made more of it even though uh, you know you, you, you made loads of it <laughs> yeah. you made loads of it you know but like you still look back and think oh i should have done more you know yeah. you, don't, you know you don't realize but um 
but anyway, yeah. Um, I think that, that's all. My, I'm just looking at my list now. That's all my questions are answered. Well, rambled on for bloody ages. <laughs> <laughs> it's, brand, it's it's fantastic though. It's fantastic. Uh, there's, there's one thing I do want to ask you actually. Would you have any advice? Say, obviously, when we're uh, post post Rona. Um, for anyone that is thinking about kind of undergoing the sort of experience that you, you've been through um, or even just kind of maybe have a hard thought on their, their heads about working for Disney or anything. Do you kind of have, do you have any advice or any guidance or anything that you can kind of share from your own experience to help people um, with that process? I think my first thing is like, uh, it's one of those crappy quotes you read, but it's like, you'll never regret anything you don't do. If you don't try, you're not like if, they, if you don't try anything, you're never going to regret anything. But like if you do try it, the worst thing that's going to happen is that you regret it. And I don't think you should ever stop yourself from at least trying and trying your best to do anything you want to do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um. So like my first thing is just to try and be your true self because again like it's like anything if you're putting on a front to try and do something that's then going to become hard work for you if you are not being yourself and and no one wants to do that you don't you don't want to build up this this perception of yourself to other people or to get something that you think you want but if you're acting the whole time again you're you're not you're not going to get out of it what you should do I'm sure in some cases maybe people do and that's fine um but if you are your true self you will get it the most authentic way and then that's probably when you will be most proud of yourself as well and it, and it will be the most rewarding for you so if you are ever like considering applying to anything like this just be true to yourself Ugh, I hate myself I'm so cringy <laughs> I hate it so much um and and just think like be honest as well because people especially i think this day and age, age respect honesty and like when you go into interviews and stuff if they ask you like you know what do you think is going to be the worst bit of this experience or like what are you looking forward to be honest because that's people will then recognize that honesty and like take it and and you know it can be used to your advantage like yeah and yeah sorry that was a really bad answer oh, no, it's not bad no it's not a bad answer at all it's not a bad answer at all i mean uh, you know you're the one that's had these experiences you know I, like, who like who am i or who's anyone else to say ah oh, you know she's wrong you know we've not we've not had this you know these experiences that you have so and, and like we touched on like don't let anyone ever put you off something if you think that's what you want to do because that that's not their right <laughs> and it's not their life to live and that's i think that's something that you kind of i know i i certainly struggled with it when i was younger it's like well what will people think of me what you know from little things like acting and you know you kind of do struggle with those not that i it ever stopped me but you, you overthink and you overanalyze every decision you make because you are worried of what people will think of you. But if you live your life trying to please other people, the only person you're not going to please is yourself. And what's the point in that? Zero. <laughs> and that is something that I've definitely, I think throughout my whole uni experience from starting uni to going to Florida to graduating, like those whole three years, um, that is something that I have learned and you know, people might see my Instagrams of me at Disney World <laughs> again because, you know, that's where I am and be like, why is she back there? Like, what is she doing? She's dressed up as freaking Rapunzel looking like an idiot. I know, I'm aware that I look stupid, but do I care? No, because in that moment I was having a good time and I, I lived my life, so. <laughs> you put that beautifully. I don't think we could word that any better. Um, talk to me then before we before we close up the conversation. Talk to me about this little business venture then that uh, that you're currently you're you're currently undergoing. Another thing that I had to be like, screw what people care. I know it's going to look really weird from the outside, but like, I'm going to do it anyway. Um, so 
again, it's Disney based. I promise they don't run my life. Like I have other interests outside of Disney and I do, I do have a life, I, I promise. Um, and um, when, so I revisited Disney World last year with Em, who is one of my friends who I went on the program with, the person who I shared the bed with on the first night. Um, and we, we returned together. And um, before that program, I was like, basically, when you go to Disney World, you can wear whatever, you know, mouse attire you want. People love to wear ears. They say it's part of the experience of going to Disney World is you can like socially, it's socially acceptable to wear a pair of ears and love your life and put on some glitter. That's just the whole vibe, <laughs> vibe you get. Um, so uh, I wanted to try it making my own and I did and I'll show you the first pair I ever made. Um, so it's just like a little flower crown oh. with some ears on. That's um, wicked. Thanks. Um, I'm going to take this off because I feel stupid. Right. No, 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 no. You, you plug, um, plug the ground. I wouldn't, that's why I brought this up. Plug, 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 plug. Sell, sell, sell. Um, yeah, so, you know, people love not shit like this because they're not shit. People love stuff like this. Um, and when I, I made another pair for my friend and we had matching while we were out there and the amount of compliments we got was crazy, you know. It, the flower crown thing it's not an original idea like people did this before I did it I'm it's not an original thing um, mm. but I just wanted to make my own and so since then because my friend also makes YouTube videos um, she is a vlogger um, check her out Emily's Wonderland <laughs> and um, so obviously she vlogged while we were out there um, because yes and um, People were commenting on the video like, oh my god, I love the ears, like where'd you get them from? Like obviously we said I made them and they were like, oh that's so cool, you should sell them. And I was like, oh yeah, that, that might be a nice idea, like at some point I'll, I'll do that. And I, I just never got around to it, this was last summer. And then obviously the whole lockdown thing happened and I was like, oh, I'm going to have a lot of time on my hands. Yeah, yeah. Um, and was like, oh, maybe I should actually do do that so I can have I like to keep myself busy yeah I'm one of those people that likes to do things um and so usually my weekends are filled up with me seeing people and you know going all over the country and yeah just keeping myself busy so at the start of lockdown I was like I'm not gonna be able to do that I have all these weekends free I need to fill my time so I was like oh I'll set up this little Etsy shop um an Instagram page and so now I'm selling selling my ears <laughs> um even though the parks are closed people are still amazingly buying them which I'm forever grateful for you know it's just a little side hustle um I respect it I respect it so much I mean this this in your own words this whole blog was born out of lockdown as well so yeah. you know, it's it's uh, it, in some ways I think you know don't get me wrong it's been terrible coronavirus has been terrible but like oh. we were saying at the start of this conversation being in lockdown although I, I I've been working still throughout I've not been I've never I've not been furloughed or I've not been working from home or anything but it still makes you reflect and it still makes you it's still pushing people towards different creative avenues which I think is brilliant I think, I, yeah, yeah, like, positive. I, I would have never had the time to do this before had to like to actually sit down and start it that's the thing that I just was putting off for ages and you know it's it's awful what's happened and you know the state of the country is interesting um but without that I would have you know never never done this like literally because I wouldn't have had the time and if I ha did have the time, I would have filled it doing something else. Yeah. So, you know, and I'm so glad because now at least I've got the foot in the door and I know it's something that I enjoy doing. So even when lockdown does end and hopefully, you know, the parks reopen and people will hopefully stay interested. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'll just keep it going as a little, little side hustle. And that's what I want it to be. Like, I, I think as well, I've really what I found from it is that, you know, I get people messaging me saying how happy receiving those ears made them. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I, I feel like I've, I've got that side of like the cast member back, that fulfillment of providing the, the joy and the magic for people in this weird time. Like it's 
the least I can try and do. And I know it's, you know, not everyone's answer and, um, you know, other people will be like, why are you doing that? And I get that. And, and I know it's not going to solve everything, but if for that like one moment I can try and bring someone that like spark of joy, that's, that's all that matters. And, you know, I'm, as well I'm not doing it for monetary gain like obviously earning a little bit of money on the side is great but like fundamentally like the quality of the product and bringing that joy to people is what is driving me and yeah I really I'm proud of myself for that like <laughs> and I don't think I've properly given myself that credit yet and I don't I think that's because it's not fully synced in like what I've done yet because it's only been like two two and a half months um but yeah no, gen genuinely, you should be proud because it's, it's, they're, uh, that, that, they look so cool. And, and you know, and it's, it's amazing. I mean, lockdown's hard. Lock, lockdown's hard for everyone mentally and, you know, lockdown's hard. So I think no matter what you do, being just being being able to push your energy towards something is, is wow. so admirable. Where, where, can we find, where can we find your product? Come on, plug. <laughs> if you're on Instagram. Oh, yeah, the, the company, I said company. The side hustle, my venture is called thingamabobs so you know in the little mermaid she's like you want thingamabobs yeah i got yeah. To obviously my name is fiona fee so we just stuck a fee on so it's thingamabobs uh credit to my friend <laughs> oh, <laughs> i do not know the name uh she is an amazingly creative person and writer um but yeah so if you search thingamabobs on instagram or just online now i think it comes up with my etsy which it didn't before um, the digital marketing side of me was like tracking Google for when it was going to pop up and so now if you search it online um, it comes up and I also sell postcards if you want to send your friends some magic mail I'm just having a great time <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that comes across generally that comes across thank you so much Fiona it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on it's been an absolute pleasure have you enjoyed it yeah. yeah it's it's really nice to to speak to people about the experiences because I know I ramble about like I ramble on about it a lot to my friends and some of them are like okay Fee, <laughs> get it you worked at Disney World like but going in depth is quite nice because I rarely get to do that anymore and um, so I've, I've really enjoyed it and there's probably things I forgot to talk about that's fine if anyone wants to I'm joking <laughs> <laughs> we'll do another one we'll do another one you know um, um thank you so much Fiona thank you take care you too.